With seven shark-filled days and nights, Shark Week is bigger than ever. Every job I do, I try to do at least one thing that I'm going to be proud of when I walk away from that project. Starting July 29th, the most fearsome week on television is back. And with seven shark-filled days and nights. My name is Cheryl Ottenritter, and I'm a sound designer mixer. Sound design is where you pull sound effects and create sound and manipulate it so that it enhances the picture and or creates an image of what you want it to create. For two decades, it's been the event of the summer. Okay, so this is where I work. Uh, in front of me is a desk with a mixing console and a keyboard and a trackball. And then in the middle is a huge computer screen, and above is a huge plasma screen. The screen itself mirrors the tracks, the audio tracks that you have. So your music tracks, your sound effects tracks. It also can be your mix window, where you can see your mixer up on the screen as well. For instance, here, if you start playing right at the beginning of the spot. A special forces op who escaped capture traveling eight days through the Iraqi desert. When I start a project, primarily I get elements from the video editor, either a network or a cable channel or an f- independent film company that is putting together a project, whether it's a promo, a national spot, a trailer for the theater, or to be placed online somewhere. The editor has put this spot together, and they give me the picture, and then they also give me these different elements. And so from just these few little elements, I create a spot. So, for instance, this is the voiceover track that they give me. This is the one dialogue bite. And the music sounds individually like this. And then the voiceover sounds like this. Meet Chris Ryan, a special forces op who escaped capture traveling eight days through the Iraqi desert. Now he's And what's fun about this particular spot is that there are a couple things in these spots that obviously they didn't give us that we created in the voiceover booth that we have. So, for instance, when this person says this, we have a visual. You see a man on the screen that's holding a walkie-talkie. That doesn't exist. We created that whole, all that audio to prop up that scene. So we put somebody in that said, you know, that did read the line. We have a visual. And then I use separate effects, including walkie-talkie effects, to make sure that it sounded correct. We have a visual. And then you blend those in with the voice. Special Forces Manhunt. And then together, it's great. We have a visual. They're right on to me now. Special Forces Manhunt. Premiering Wednesday at 8. I was a music major in college. I have two music degrees. I studied to be a uh, music composer. And um, in the classical form, they made us write for all ensembles. So everything from orchestra to uh, woodwind quartets, pretty much every ensemble that you can think of, they would ask us to write for. And I also studied to be a jazz musician. I played clarinet, flute, saxophone, and piano. I was really thinking I'd become a clarinetist in one of the service bands, like the uh, Washington Navy Band or something like that, and then compose on the side. And uh, that's what I saw myself becoming when I was in college. I started getting really sick, and nobody, none of the doctors could figure it out, and my dentist finally figured it out that it was my jaws. It was a combination between playing the clarinet with a very thick reed and a hereditary uh, jaw, I forget the technical term, maxophilical, whatever, occurrence in my family where a lot of times our teeth and our jaw structure doesn't form to adult. And so they recommend it because I have these issues, not to play anything that I had to put in my mouth again. So here I was the summer before my last year in college. 
I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was going to play clarinet, and I had jaw surgery. So I d did some research and felt like I wanted to go into music publishing. Well, I went, and I found out that I didn't like it. So I was, I was at a loss, and I said, well, I'll just move home, which is Washington, D.C., and kind of figure it out. I started teaching piano. I had a trio, jazz trio. I played at night. I composed a little bit on the side. Um, and more and more, my friends started asking me to write film scores for their independent films. And I realized I didn't know how to do that. So I found a recording studio near my house where the composer did that for a living. And I asked him if I could hang out. For two decades, it's been the event of the summer. Well, my training, I feel, is very influential in how I mix and how I edit music, especially. Since I have a very strong music background, editing music is simple to me. And I can also converse very well with composers that I work with. And so we have a stronger collaboration to the point where I can say, hey, you know, why don't you bring back in, you know, that triangle there? It'll touch the logo right at the right point. Or, you know, could you bring that back a measure? Talking in their lingo makes some feel more comfortable with me and then you get a you have more fun and you get a better product mike rudson is on a quest to overturn all of our beliefs about the ocean's most feared killer this particular spot is actually a movie trailer that's play, played in the theaters nationwide it's for shark week and one thing that I was directed by the producer to create is an ambiance, a, a, like a scary ambiance. And when it was given to me, it was just voice and music. And the producer was like, I can't get any sound. You have to create everything. So all the feeling, all the tonal quality, everything was created by putting together sounds. And one, an example, a good example, is right here. It is visual in a sense. You get the shark, but it's also the shark coming and going. And so you feel it. You feel the tension rising. For instance, I didn't see anything in particular that felt like it needed a change or an effect, but I felt like it needed something to be scarier, so I put in this effect right here. To add to the ambiance of what was going on. And then together, it sounds like this. This is what you may not think that you would hear underwater, but I have a cell door, a gun, and a splash. So together, you get this. So all together then. And the power of nature's perfect predator. Starting July 29th, the most fearsome week on television is back. One of the joys of what I do is that kind of creation of making a sound that maybe you didn't even think of that sound for that particular thing on the screen and it works so perfectly. Americans produce 200 million tons of waste each year. Did you know that we're working on turning landfills into power plants? When I first saw this spot for Discovery Science, it, it was mainly graphic-oriented and 3D animation, not real. And some, some of the things I felt like you could easily find in a sound effects library, but I felt like we could get better effects if we actually created them. So if looking at it, the first, the opening of the spot where the cardboard is, is a huge cardboard um, graphic or a word called year made out of cardboard graphically and it swings out and in 3D comes across the picture. So then that's how you hear this sound. Um, we totally create it by ripping different textures of cardboard and also rubbing FedEx packs together and layering them together and mixing them so they sound like this. And they totally go in time with the picture. 
And when it stops, it stops. And then all of a sudden, the cardboard pops up from the bottom of the screen, very sharp edges, and abruptly stops. So it goes from the sweeping to the jumping. And then the cardboard turns and falls, and the windmills pop up out of the falling. And this is actually one of the hardest things. Windmills don't make sound. So what are you supposed to do? And suddenly I was like, oh, I know. So I went into the booth, and we recorded this drum. I didn't record the drum part. I recorded the sound part coming out of it, the tail end, the decay. <laughs> So that part at the very end, then I made into this sound. And I, I timed it, the rhythm to the windmill going around, and then added a very high, thin electric motor sound with a wind going in and wind going out. And then we put all the music and the voice together, and this is what it sounded like. Did you know that we're working on turning landfills into power plants? Buildings account for almost half of all greenhouse gas emissions. Hence, rain harvesting rooftop technologies, of course. Now, this next uh, graphic was of the greenhouse emissions going into the building scene of how buildings make more gas than anything else. And so the producer heard an anvil hitting throughout this whole piece and it wasn't animated enough to go with with the animation so I had the idea of taking it one step further and used several different construction sounds like a speed drill and a big hammer and a bunch of other little things rolled in kind of like a mishmash of sounds and then going into where the building grew going to the rooftop garden I had rain mixed in there, so at the end, all you hear is more like this but it's all the construction sounds going into the rain. Then the big kilowatt graphic came in, and this was one where she looked at me and she says, I have no idea. And we played with a bunch of different things. I ended up with a light bulb that's been broken but yet it com starts to come back together into solar panels. So in this case, I used wind chimes to, for the broken f uh, bulb and then went into actually a uh, glacier, icebergs moving for the solar panel. Did you know that science can make solar as cheap as the daily newspaper? Ecotech, the science of what's next, starting next Monday at 9. I love sound designing. Uh, one reason why I like doing spots, I like doing promos, is that you get to do it all from the very beginning. You get to do all the music editing, mixing, sound designing, whereas when you work on film, especially feature film, you, you work in teams. So you may only get to, to edit the dialogue. It could be your job to do the guns. Oh, it's your job to do the guns. I'll see you in about three months. You know. And so for me, I love the fact that I can create everything from the very beginning and see it through and I love spots because they get done in a day or two. Here is, I'm working with computers, I have a lot of software, a lot of technical knowledge that I have to juggle but yet it needs to be creative and so it stimulates both sides of my brain which makes me exceedingly happy. It exhilarates me to get to the end of a project and have it sound really good and then turn on my TV the next day and hear it, and hear it sound good. Here's an exclusive look at scenes from one of this year's big premieres.